Hi there, it's AJ here and today we're going to look at how to install the latest version of WAMP server onto your Windows computer. It's really not as hard as you might think it is but there's a few steps that you have to follow and as long as you follow each step exactly and do them in the right order then there should be no problems. If you're lucky WAMP will work as soon as you fire it up and if it doesn't then we'll have some troubleshooting tips at the end of the video. But step one and step two will be for those who already have an old version of WAMP on their system and they're looking to upgrade. So if you're just doing a fresh install, if you've never had WAMP on your laptop before, then there's a timestamp in the description and we'll meet you at step three. We'll see you then. Now if you're going to upgrade from say version 2.5 to the latest version then I feel the best way to do that is to actually get rid of WAMP altogether and start with a clean sheet. I've gone down the route of trying to upgrade PHP and MySQL and believe me it can get quite dirty, quite nasty and very quickly. So. In my opinion, you're better off to back up your websites that you want to keep and get rid of the existing WAMP altogether. So to do that, the first thing you want to do is log into the dashboard of whatever website you want to keep and download the all-in-one WP migration plugin. Now this is a great tool and I've had very good success with it. It hardly ever fails and it's very easy and quick to use. So once it's installed we'll go to export and let's click on that. All you want to do is export to file and that's going to create a file that's got everything that you need to recreate your site on your next installation of WordPress. Now I did say it hardly ever fails but the one time that it might is if you've got a really big website so let's just go back to plugins if you want to do a backup of your backup then get the duplicator plugin by Snap Creek and if you run that and that will download a package and that will be a backup for your backup just before you run duplicator though I would go into the all-in-one WP migration menu here and click on backups to make sure that you had one and you can download it again if you're not sure whether you've got it on your laptop and then you can delete that because there's really no point in bundling up that big file if we don't need it. So back in plugins, sorry back in a duplicator go to packages and it will tell you no packages found so you click the create new. I won't go through that but what it will do is it will then create a package that gets downloaded to your laptop and you've got your backup. So if I just look in downloads you can see this is the one here from the all-in-one and it's a 21 megabyte file so not a big site. Once you've got your websites backed up, then the only thing left to do is to actually uninstall WAMP. So you just go to Control Panel and we'll go to Programs. And we're just going to look for WAMP, which should be down the bottom here somewhere. And we would just click Uninstall. Now you do need to remember that when you uninstall it doesn't actually delete the WAMP folder. So if you go to uh, computer and you see drive assuming that's where you've got it installed you'll need to manually delete that WAMP folder. As I said it's better to start with a fresh install and you don't want to be trying to upload and uh, install over an existing folder. So if there's anything in there that you want to keep that you've put in there, now's the time to move it. 
and then just delete that folder. So now we should all be on the same page, those who had an earlier existing version of WAMP and those who are installing it for the first time. The first thing we want to do is get the WAMP download. So if you just Google WAMP server, it should take you to this page here. And if you do end up on the French language page, then you can change the language up here. Now if I scroll down, we've got two download buttons, one for 64-bit um, and the other for 32-bit. I'm sure you probably know which your system is running, but just in case you don't, it's easy to check. Just go to the Start menu, right-click on Computer and click Properties. And if you have a look here, we can see System Type 32-bit Operating System. So that's the one that I want. Now if we click on the Download, I go to this Download Directly link here and that takes us to SourceForge and I'm going to go in to this green button here download latest version and that's what you want to download now once you've got that we don't actually want to run the install quite yet there's a few things that we want to do and the first thing is we want to download and install any dependencies that we're going to require so let's go to a, a website here and I'll put the link in the description to this if you scroll down it will tell you exactly what you need to uh, run this now you can always check to see what you've got by going to your um, programs and we'll just have a look and see what I've got here I'll scroll down a little bit and you can see I've got all these redistributables now you're going to need all of these here and if we scroll further down there's actually links to each individual one so you can go and download each one that you need and install them. There's also another web page that you can go to and I'll also put the link to the description for this and if we scroll right to the very bottom you can see there's two zip files here one for 32-bit and the other for 64-bit so you can just download all of the files that you require in one place so that's probably the easiest way to do it now just while we're um, talking about dependencies what is the uh, .NET framework that you've got that's something that we should be looking at so if we go to control panel yet again and we'll just take a look you can see I have got Microsoft .NET Framework 4 extended if you don't see at least Framework 4 if you've only got th um, Framework 3 point something or other then you want to upgrade to 4 so I'll put the link to the in the description to this particular website here and this is getting the same framework as what I've got and you just download that now once those are all installed then the next thing is we're going to actually install the WAMP server just before we do that uh, what we want to do is we want to turn off our antivirus so I've got a vast I'm just going to go in there and disable until computer is restarted and the other thing is if you've got Skype running then you want to stop that and get out of Skype because that uses um, port 80 and there'll be a conflict because uh, Apache needs to connect to that as well so make sure you've stopped Skype and you've stopped your antivirus before you actually go and um, run the um, the WAMP so if we click on that click run and we'll just allow that 
you'll have to accept the agreement and click next now this might freak you out a little bit by seeing all this red writing with this uh, yellow highlighting and then there's a list of packages and you think oh no have I got to go and install all these well no you've probably already done that if you followed the previous steps so you don't need to worry about that you just click next and do the install I'm going to cancel of course because I already have it uh, installed so if your install went properly then you should have a new icon on your desktop which you want to double click and get WAMP server running now you'll find a new icon down here at the bottom and mine's green because everything's running but yours will start off as red and then it will turn orange it'll either be here or it'll be hidden in the hidden icons here now don't be alarmed if it stays orange and doesn't turn green um, I got caught out with that more than once actually because I've done this several times and I found that it doesn't in fact turn orange or sorry it doesn't in fact turn green until you reboot your computer even though it's working perfectly it's not showing up as working so the way to test if WAMP is working even when it's orange is just go here and click on local host and if you get that page come up then everything's probably good just reboot your laptop and you should be good to go now if for some reason it's not working still then perhaps you've overlooked something so you can download a new tool here and I'll put a link here in the description and this is going to check your dependencies so I'm just going to run that and I'll show you what happens when you click run so we'll select English and we'll do the check you'll see for me it said two packages aren't installed and that was a very early one for 2008 and the very latest one for 2019 but WAMP is running fine for me without those I don't need to upgrade but if you're having problems then you can run this tool and it will tell you what you need to get and where to get it from so let's assume that you've got WAMP running now um, if you click on the icon here and go to PHP my admin this is let me see this is where you're going to have to log in to uh, set up databases in older versions of WAMP you would go straight to the PHP my admin but in the latest version you have to actually log in so the username is root and the password password field is blank so once you do that you can log in and you'll be able to set up any new databases that you need and the final thing is and the final thing is if you have uh, websites that you've backed up then it's almost certain that the default upload size is not going to be big enough for you so now I'll just show you here if we go to PHP and then go to settings you can see my upload max file size I've changed that to 512 megabytes the default size is 2 megabytes and I did have it bigger I had it on 8 megabytes and that wasn't big enough to upload my 23 megabyte file so I just cranked it right up by clicking choose and putting it on 512 but there's no need to go up to a ridiculous size just whatever size you need to upload your backed up websites so you might find 256 or 128 is big enough and I think that fairly well wraps it up if you've got any problems just say something in the comments and we'll try and get you going with it thanks for watching